ho stampers, Deb Valder here, your new Fun Stampers Journey Coach. Today I'm going to show you all about the journal modeling paste. And this is what the paste looks like. Okay, comes in a little jar, looks like facial cream. Do not use it for facial cream, but that's what it looks like in the jar. And if you could actually touch and feel this, it almost looks like background paper until you touch it. It has got depth, it's got texture, um, it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, these are two of our stencils, and um, I used both of them with the modeling paste. It's a phenomenal. I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you can do with it. I'm going to finish off. This is one of my um, my calendars that I'm making for a class that I'm doing. And um, I use just a little bit right here, but I'm going to actually show you how to do the whole background um, with just the, the modeling paste um, right here. And then... Um, there's just so many things that you can do with it. You can color it with acrylic paint. You can you can spritz it with some of our spritzers right here. Um, you can also use, uh, let's see, you can just use it plain like it is, like we've got right here. So let me just get started and show you how to do this card right here. I know I've been doing a lot of black and white, and that's why I wanted to show you this one right here. Um, again, using our oval framelits with the perforations in them. They are just beyond elegant. And then um, I've also used on this one um, our blending fusion to color. It's just absolutely gorgeous. So I wanted to, I know I've been doing a lot of black and white, so I wanted to show you some color. And what I did was I started on the um, creamsicle cardstock and then um, added the journey paste to it. Now I can color over this and I'm going to do that in another video, but this one right here is, um, I just love it. I just absolutely love you. This is the card that I'm going to work on. So let's start off with the flower. I'm going to put this one aside. And then um, I'll bring it back in at the end. But this one right here is the one we're going to work on. So I'm going to grab my um, my flower. Now I've pre-stamped it. And when you do paper piercing, which is what we did here, you see you can see um, three different layers right here. Um, when you do paper piercing like this, you need to make more than one of the same um, element so that you can take and cut it out. So what I did was I stamped this three times. Here's the first one. Here's the second one, and then here's going to be the, or I'm sorry, this is the, yeah, you're right. This is the second one, and this is the third one. So you're just going to basically stamp it three times. So we need one of the whole entire thing, and then I'm going to take my little journey scissors, and these are just so nice to have because they just cut so precisely. All right, so um, there's my first one that I cut out. Yes, and I did pre-cut it before. I love to cut, and I love to color. You guys know that. Um, that hasn't changed. Um, I do love to cut, and I do love to color. So there's the first one, and then the second one, what I did was I outlined what I was going to keep, all right? So I'm, the outline is the what I'm going to cut away, and this part is the part that I'm going to keep. You see, you don't need the whole thing because the second layer is just this part right here. So I'm just going to, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the bottom part, but what I'm doing right here is just cutting out um, the flower. And it's really pretty fast. Oops, wait a minute. Let's see. Let's go up. Let's go up one more. Right to the right to the pink. All right. So we're just going to take and cut this out. And it seems the reason I like to do the um, the outline is so that um, you can kind of see because sometimes it gets kind of wonky. It just kind of you're, you're just not sure where to start and where to stop. So I just like to outline it, and then I know where to cut and where to what to leave back in. So this is my second layer right here. So it's going to go bottom. This one will be the middle one. Okay, so there's my middle one. That's going to go right there. And basically, with paper piecing, you just add them one on top of the other. And then for my last piece, I'm going to keep these two long, these two long leaves right here and just run it around. These are the, this is the part that you're going to see on the top. So we want to make sure that our cutting is pretty good. And again, one is going over the other one, so you don't have to be real exact about this. This is called paper piecing, and I love to do it because you know how much I love to cut. With these um, magical scissors right here, the ones that don't um, collect any glue, um, they're free of glue, it's just so nice um, because they're sharp, they're tiny, they're very precise. All right, we're just going to go right around here. And finish it off. I'm going to keep these long ones. And you notice when I cut, I actually move the paper instead of the scissors. Um, I learned that a long time ago at a craft show. 
and the lady was doing some shear and snip, and she said the most important thing when you do this is to move the paper and not the scissors. And I didn't know what she meant at first, but then all of a sudden I started moving the paper, and everything went so much faster. And it was more precise. So here is my little piece right here. I'm just going to cut off this one right there because it's got a little bit of pink on there. And there's our three pieces right here. Now with this one I left it black and white. I'm going to start using my little tiny, and that's the nice thing about having the foam squares, is that we get them in two different sizes. And for this piece right here, I'm going to use the little tiny ones. Remember, for $2.95, you get 308 of these for $2.95. So I'm going to just take and pull it out just a little bit, and what I like about them is you don't have to fuss with them. All right, so let's take our middle piece, and I'm just going to put one right down here at the bottom. You see that? one right down there at the bottom. I'm going to add that to, and what you do is you find the same piece that you're covering up. So you can't even tell the difference. All right, and the same way with this one, I'm just going to take this one. I'll actually put two on here. I did recycle some paper, so when you see these numbers on them, I'm going to show you a project that I did, my little calendar. And um, one of the gals uh, kind of goofed up one of her months, so what I did was I had all that extra paper because she didn't need all the other ones, and... There we go. So there's, whoops, I forgot to cut off that little piece right there. Isn't that funny looking? Okay, so here is our flower. Okay, does that look familiar so far? I've got all my little pieces. All right, for my flower. Now what I did was, um, let me get these out of the way. I took the um, oval framelits. Let me just show you. Bring those in here. I took those and I made one of my oval frames. I took black paper, my my black licorice paper, and um, these are these are the two right um, the two sets that go right inside. Okay, so this right here is the um, perforated one, and then here's the cutting one. And all I did was cut out my oval, and it has the perforations with it. I showed you that in an earlier. Um, uh, video. So um, I will do a product review on that also. And then what I do is just take some cardstock. I put it onto um, magnetic sheets that you can just buy at any one of the box stores. And then when I go to store them, I know that I have them all here. And I know that they're going to stay. See? So then I just open up my little um, folder. And I told you before, at first I didn't like these folders. Um, but I'm telling you, they store so much easier than any of the cases. All right, so here is um, my, my framelits, and here is my little circle. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add that to this right here, okay? So I've got that part of it already done, and um, I did pop that on also. So I will just take a couple of my little glue dots right here, put them side to side. And you see how these little ones go so much farther? Um, because they, they just are tiny, and you can just um, bring them in um, wherever you need them. And then I'll just take and put one on each one of my uh, my leaves right here. Actually, I don't even need two for that. I'll just put one right here in the middle. And again, um, what's nice about that is... Oh, stuck to my finger. Okay, what's nice about that is that um, they fit just perfectly. All right? And we're going to add that right to the center, just like that. All right, now I'm going to bring in some of my um, twine, and we have thread and we have twine, and what I like about this, this um, both of them, is that they're so easy to tie. Um, I don't know whether they coat them um, or what, but it just, it's so much easier to tie when you, when you go to um, pull it, it just stays. It doesn't try to come undone, it doesn't, it's just so nice to, to work with. All right, taking my good sharp scissors again, I'm just going to cut off a bow, and then I'm going to grab one of my... Uh, glue dots, and they're right here. Let me just show you. Um, I'm going to grab, uh, what I like about them is, is that they're on this little sheet, and um, I'm just going to roll one of these up, add it to my little bow right here, and that's going to go right here. Uh, where do I want it? I want it right here. Alright, so there's my bow, and now for the fun part. Okay, we, I'm going to show you how to do this background, all right? 
Now I will grab my black paper, and that's the reason I wanted to do this with you on black, is so that you could see it just as, as um, easily as possible on my video. Um, the, the stamp set that I just used for that flower is called Wonderful Day, and I just absolutely love it. It is indexed on the back, so this is one of the ones that's indexed on the back, and it just has some beautiful, beautiful pieces here to it. Um, but what I'm going to do now is bring in one of my, um, a piece of my grid paper. I'm going to bring in one of my stencils. Now for this one, I used this stencil, but just to show you how cool they all are, uh, this is the one I used for this right here, but I'm going to use um, the one that looks like stained glass. Glass. All right, I'm going to bring in my little um, piece of black, and that's right here, and we're going to we're going to lay that on there like that. Now here is one that I did part. Um, I just did part of the. You don't have to use the whole stencil. I just did part of it, and wait until you see what I did with this card. Here it is on the black again. That's the one um, that I used for the other card. Here it is. See, this is just plain paper. And with the stenciling on the top of it, it just gives it so much dimension. It's really, it's really way cool, I'm just telling you. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just lay this on here just like this. So you're going to need a stencil. You're going to need some paper, obviously. I like to line it up as perfectly as I can, um, and that way there... Um, it just looks better at the end. We're going to open up our modeling paste, and if you've ever decorated cakes, this is just like it. I'm telling you, it's just like it. This is our spatula, okay, the Fun Stamper's Journey spatula, and this is our paste. And I'm going to go in with my paste and just hold it down here at the bottom and just start spreading it across. You want it to be nice and thin, so you're just going to lay it on just like you were um, frosting a cake. You go back and forth just to get all the spots. And it's going to be in no time at all. Now this is going to take a little while to dry, so normally I would have done this um, like the very first thing, then worked on the rest of my card. But what I'm going to do with you is actually um, use one to finish up my card that I've already done previously. It would takes about, I would say, maybe 20 minutes to dry. So like I said, if I had done this first and then went to um, cutting out my, my, or stamping my flowers and then um, stamping my flowers and then um, cutting them out and putting all of that together, then um, that would have worked and this would have been dry probably by that time. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just turn this around because I like to work from the top to the bottom. I'm gonna turn that around and finished my little paste. Now I could just stop it right there if I wanted to, but like I said, I'm just gonna... And you'll see that I'm just, I just keep scraping it. Two reasons. Number one, I don't wanna waste the paste. And number two, um, I wanna make sure it's nice and even. You know, if, if you know anybody that uh, is a cement layer, you know, like they do sidewalks and stuff, that's what this reminds me of. I'm, I'm not a cement layer, but... Um, isn't this the coolest thing? And it's just like it's just like decorating a cake. I just want to get that one little spot right there. Okay, so now I'm just going to scrape it all off. Got a little bit more right here. All right, and then you're going to see. All right, I'm just scraping it all off to make it smooth, just like um, if I was a cement layer. All right, there we go. All right, now um, I would... I will, as soon as I'm done with my video, I'm going to put all of that um, right in the water and just wash it right off because it does dry pretty fast. I'm putting the top on right away because I want to make sure that that doesn't dry out. And then all I'm going to do with this is to just lift it up and voila. I'm going to just let it set there and dry. And um, well, let's, let's take it off just so I can show it to you. Now, when it's, when it's done, what I'm going to do is I, I can, I can either, um, rub it like this right now and, and, uh, smooth up the edges, or I'm going to show you, um, how to sand it so that you can just get the edges nice and, um, smooth. All right. So I just set that all, um, in the back there to dry. Let me bring these back in here so I can show you, um, what I was going to do is just to take my little sanding block, okay, and, um, just sand the edges. And you can just make your own little sanding block. Take some 
take some, um, a, a, just a little block of wood, put a piece of sandpaper on it, just very fine sandpaper, and then just smooth off the edges, just like that. All right, so now let's put our card together because all of our pieces are done. So what I'm going to do is take my um, background paper like this. Now, normally I would cut this out, and I didn't, and I'm, I'm going to kick myself for it, but anyway, um, I didn't do that yet. Um, so what I'm going to do, just to save time, is to put on my black paper to my white paper. And there's that. Now, with this one right here, you really want to make sure you get some good adhesive. This is very strong adhesive. Tape runners, um, I wouldn't use. They won't hold. Um, this is the best of both worlds. It's very, very sticky, almost like... Um, almost like your, your um, tape runner, not your tape runner, your, um, oh, what do we call it, our, our, tear, our tear tape, you know, the, um, it's just really um, the adhesive, but it's, it's also, um, it's also just as easy to use as a tape runner. Am I making sense here? All right, so yes, as, as you can see, this does curl a little bit, and that's why you want to get it all the way close to the edges. I might even do the edges here and here. Now, this is way more tape than I would normally use, but again, remember, um, you want this to stick down. You want this to stick down good. So I am going to lay this down just like that, and then I'm going to show you what I was just talking about. This It's called white liner tape, okay? So you could also use white liner tape with this if you wanted to. The next thing I need to do to finish this off is just to add some adhesive to the back of this, and I'm going to use my, um, my runner again, okay? And I'm getting it very close to the edge because we are putting it on um, a surface that has um, some dimension to it. So let's just add that right there. And our card is done. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? Now let me just bring in my other one right here. Okay. Aren't they just beautiful? Absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Okay. Let me just show you one more thing real quick. Um, here is, can you see that? That is my, um, this is my, my uh, easel. The easels come uh, plain. Whoops. The easels come plain, and then, like I said, we just painted the background. You can paint it white. You can paint it black. You can paint it, paint it any color that you want. And then what I do with them, let me just show you. I have my calendar. So you can take and you can put one calendar in there. You can take and move this over and put a picture in there. You can take and put two of these in there if you want. So I like to do this because then, whoops, because then you can see um, what's coming up the next month. So I'm, it, this is January, um, and then I'm looking at February the next month. So sometimes you'll see that they look like they're a little bit high, but what I wanted to do is to just line up these right across here like this. So sometimes it might look like it's a little, it's a little high, but it's really not. And the other thing that you can do, I also made up um, these right here so that you can have a perpetual calendar. So you can write in people's um, birthdays on here, and next year you can keep this, and you can just redo these. Does that make sense? So look for my class coming up on this. Now on this one right here, um, I just did a little piece of the, um, the modeling paste, all right? But um, for this one, I'm going to show you what I did. I already um, did this part of it right here, so now what I'm going to do is to grab... I just wanted to show you how I did this. I'm going to grab this and I'm just going to line it up right like that. See how they, they line up perfectly? And then I'm going to grab my modeling paste and my spatula and I'm just going to finish this little guy off just like this. All right, just to show you how I did it and how easy it is. It's nothing to be afraid of. This modeling paste is amazing. All right. And you just want to make sure that when you do this, you just flatten it all out. Just like that. Okay. You don't want to get too much on there because if you get too much, it gets kind of gloppy underneath and you don't want that to happen. Alrighty, now let's smooth it out just like we did on our paper. So this modeling paste, like I said, I'm doing this on wood. You can do it on paper. You can do it on wood. You can do it on just about anything. All righty. And just make sure it's nice and smooth. 
just like you would if you were doing a cake. And then when we lift it up, lift it up nice and slow, and then we're going to leave those pieces on there until it dries. We're just going to sand it off, and we are good to go. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So this is going to be the top of my calendar for this one. But look for my video on this very shortly. Um, it's an amazing class. We sell the easels. We sell the modeling paste. Come on over. You're going to love Fun Stamper's journey. This is Deb Valder. I hope you had a great time with me today. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Take care and have a great day.